You might think that a rocket exploding before it reaches orbit would be a bad thing. Well, that's what happened this week with SpaceX's Starship when it roared to life with the Super Heavy booster generating twice the amount of lift of the Saturn V, the NASA rocket that took the first ever astronauts to the moon over a half century ago. But approximately four minutes after launch, the rocket began to deviate from its intended course. That enormous stainless steel structure, which was still connected to the sizable booster, began to tumble uncontrollably, causing its autonomous flight termination system to activate. Consequently, its automated flight termination system activating, resulting in a vast cloud of gas and debris as the most robust rocket ever built disintegrated, scattering rocket fragments over numerous miles of the adjacent Texas coast. To the layman watching the events unfold, it looked like a colossal failure, a rocket that fell far short of reaching its destination. But nevertheless, Numerous individuals regarded the initial orbit launch effort as a decisive triumph, demonstrating that the organization is advancing in the correct direction toward creating the most efficient method of space conveyance ever devised. And this is how astronauts just declared the SpaceX Starship explosion is unlike any other. Yeah, you say people are putting on a brave face. You have it completely wrong, Todd. This was an enormously successful test flight. You might know him, Chris Austin Hadfield, the first Canadian to perform extravehicular activity in outer space. He's flown two space shuttle missions and also served as commander of the International Space Station. It's definitely an objective opinion because about 10 years ago, the topic of SpaceX came up and he was pretty dismissive of SpaceX. That dismissive attitude and general ignorance were very prevalent within the NASA community at that time. According to Hadfield, why this might seem like a disappointing outcome, it's important to note that the mission was not a total failure. This was, after all, the very first orbital attempt of the rocket, and valuable lessons were learned along the way. The destruction circuitry installed on the rocket ensured that it posed no threat to anyone on the ground, and the decision to send the autocorrect to destruct command was likely made with safety in mind. In the field of aerospace engineering, the development of new vehicles requires a great deal of experimentation and testing. It's only through those tests that engineers can gather the data necessary to identify areas for improvement and fine-tune the design of the vehicle for optimal performance. Chris Hadfield explained one of the key aspects of this testing process is actually throwing the vehicle. While it may sound simple, it's a crucial step that can't be skipped. Building a vehicle is one thing. But until it's actually launched, it's impossible to know how it will perform in real-world condition. Following a recent test flight, the team identified areas in need of modification before the next flight can take place. While this may seem like a setback, it's actually a natural and necessary part of the development process. By analyzing the data gathered during the flight, engineers can identify specific areas for improvement and make the necessary modifications to ensure the next flight is even more successful. It's through these incremental improvements that aerospace vehicles are able to push the boundaries of what's possible. By carefully analyzing each test flight and making adjustments as necessary, engineers can continue to improve the design and capabilities of the vehicle over time. Overall, while the need for modification following a test flight might be frustrating, it's an essential part of the development process. By embracing this iterative approach and continuously making improvements, engineers can create aerospace vehicles that are more efficient, more capable, and more successful than ever before. Jared Isaacman, an American entrepreneur and commercial astronaut, also said, A big step towards a more exciting future. Congratulations, SpaceX, on the big test. In another tweet, he reaffirmed, once again captured the world's attention and imagination with the Starship Orbital Flight Test. We're one step closer to a major capability to explore, understand, work, and maybe inhabit other parts of our solar system. When Starship succeeds, it will be another evolutionary leap for humankind. Since the inception, SpaceX has been known to take a fail-fast, learn-fast approach. With that context in mind, Starship's first launch was definitely a success. As a point of reference, a series of Starship high-altitude prototype tests starting in 2019 also resulted in what SpaceX is often referred to as unscheduled rapid disassemblies, or explosions. 
That's really the kind of sort of first step in a very long journey that would require many, many flights, Musk said on Monday. For those that have followed the history of Falcon 9 and Falcon 1, actually, and our attempts at reusability, I think it might have been close to 20 attempts before we actually recovered a stage. And then it took many more flights before we had reusability that was meaningful, where we didn't have to rebuild the whole rocket. Once the rocket is proven, SpaceX wants to use the Starship vehicle to deploy the company's Starlink Internet satellites, flying heavier, next-generation versions of the broadband relay stations than the spacecraft now being launched by the smaller Falcon 9 rocket. An animation released from SpaceX showed the company's concept for deploying Starlink satellites from a Starship vehicle in orbit, using a mechanism that works like a giant Pez dispenser. Not only astronauts, other experts tend to agree. Some folks think Starship test launch was a failure because it ended with an abort shows a basic misunderstanding of purpose of a test flight that from Poppy Northcutt, who worked at NASA on the Apollo missions in the 60s, and he argued, a test flight is meant to stress the system in order to improve. To paraphrase Bill Gates, you learn more from failure than from success, she added. The challenge is handling situations when things go wrong, Northcutt continued. Any idiot can handle things when it goes right. When there's a failure, you want an orderly failure. Good job here. Others argued that blowing up on the launch pad would have been a huge setback for SpaceX, whereas at least making it to the air was a giant step in the right direction. In fact, SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell told reporters back in February that the real goal is to not blow up the launch pad. Just for context, because non-space people seem confused, tweeted science communicator and PBS host Swapna Krishna. It, of course, would have been better if the rocket had not exploded, but it's not actually a big deal that it exploded. It may look that way to some people, but it's not a failure, former NASA official Daniel Dumbacher, the executive director of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, told the New York Times. It's a learning experience. The potential impact of SpaceX's starship on the field of space exploration can never be overstated, as it could enable us to reach the moon and establish settlements on Mars. Given this enormous potential, the stakes for the company are incredibly high. In other words, while the explosion was certainly a setback, it's unlikely to be the end of the Starship program. SpaceX has a proven track record of resilience and innovation and will continue to refine and improve the Starship until it achieves full potential. Ultimately, the success of the Starship will depend on the company's ability to learn from the setbacks, iterate quickly, and remain committed to their vision of revolutionizing space exploration. They'll look into it, they'll figure it out, and they'll come back the next time and they'll fix these problems and they'll move on to the next one, and eventually they'll get this thing flying all the way to orbit, Dumbacher told the New York Times. I'm fully confident of that. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.